Okay, all right. Okay, guys. Uh, we are going to start off with hypothesis testing. Okay, and uh, now what is hypothesis testing? Okay, let me share the screen and let me show you guys the PPT as well. Okay, which you can keep with you for your reference. Okay. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay, all right. I hope my screen is visible. Okay, all right. Let us let us start off with hypothesis testing. Okay, and what exactly is hypothesis testing? See, let's understand what is hypothesis. Okay, hypothesis is basically a theory that you are trying to formulate. Okay, now all of us have heard of some conspiracy theories in our life, right? Some of the other conspiracy theories, right? uh similarly now there's obviously hypothesis testing is not a conspiracy theory okay uh okay just a moment okay all right but hypothesis testing is basically a theory that a, a data scientist or a data analyst formulates okay and on that particular theory experiments are built okay for example, uh, let's say I come up uh, with a particular theory. For example, I am working as a data scientist for a pharmaceutical company. Okay, you are, or let's say you are working for a um, data scientist for a pharmaceutical company, and you come up with uh, with a theory that there is some drug A which will cure, let's say, uh, joint pain. 70% faster as compared to drug B. And this drug B is produced by the same company. Okay. Let's say there is one pharmaceutical company, let's say LPU Pharma. Okay. And LPU Pharma creates two drugs or two tablets, two medicines, drug A and drug B. Okay. And then uh, now let's say drug B is a market leader. Okay. Everyone in the market uses drug B. Okay. And now there comes a theory, there comes a research group which says that, hey, we have created drug A and we are stating that this drug A can heal the joint pain 70% faster as compared to drug B. So what, what has that group A done? What has that research group done? They have formulated a hypothesis. What is that hypothesis? Hypothesis bolta hai ki yaar, tum ke paas ek drug hai. Okay, you guys have a drug. This drug is a market leader. But hey, you know what? We have come up with a drug which is so good, okay, which will heal joint pain faster. Now, this is a great thing for a pharmaceutical company because they can advertise it better. But you cannot just make statements in the air, right? You have to, you have to prove that. Ko prove karna ki that the drug B that I have created is really good or the, the drug A that I've created is really good and uh, it gives the result 70% faster, okay? Now, this is where hypothesis testing comes in picture and this is also something that we use in the industry, okay? All the data science applications that are built, machine learning applications that are built, any problem that is solved is always solved on the basis of hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing, I am coming up with the theory that, hey, you know what, what I'm doing, I am challenging. Guys, always remember the field of physics, the field of math, the field of chemistry, and the field of mathematics. Any field only progresses because there are hypotheses coming up, right? For example, in the in the year 1929, Einstein formulated a theory. For example, let's say E equals to MC square. I'm giving you a very random example. Yeah, he came up with E equals to MC square. Let's say in 2023 or 24, there comes there comes one more guy there comes one more scientist 
who's coming up with an alternate theory that he is like, hey, you know what? E equal e, e is not exactly equals to mc square. E equals to mc to the power of seven. He is coming up with an alternate theory. Now he has to prove that alternate theory. Okay. This is nothing but hypothesis testing. Okay. Hypothesis testing sometimes it's also called a significance testing. Okay. You don't have to confuse. It's it's one and the same. Hypothesis and significance testing is one and the same. Is an act in statistics where an analyst tests an assumption regarding a population parameter. What is population parameter? Population parameter is let's say again let's say my company creates um uh, let's say a drug okay or, or again a tablet this tablet is for a joint pain okay so all the tablets my companies produce is is a population parameter okay as simple as that yes the methodology employed by the analyst depends on the nature of the data used and the reason for the analysis what is the reason for the analysis in our example what was the reason for the analysis the reason for the analysis is that what is the claim that i'm making i am making a claim that hey drug a will heal the joint pain 70 percent faster as compared to drug b yes hypothesis testing is used to assess the plausibility of hypotheses using a sample data what is plausibility of analysis we'll see that what is plausibility of hypothesis such data may come from a larger population or generating uh, generate data generating process okay now here there is a statement hypothesis testing is used to assess the plausibility of hypothesis using sample data now what does this mean this statement is heavy iska matlab kya hota here it says for example there is a hypothesis a hypothesis is like an educated guess or an idea about something i am making a guess about something or i am making up or i am coming up with a theory उसको बोलते हाइपोथेसिस करना ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन इजरो वॉन्टेड टू सेंड मंगलयान ओके इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन देंड इट ऑन मार्स दे केम अप विद हाइपोथेसिस दैट हे यू नो वॉट यू डोंट रियली नीड दैट मच फ्यूल टू लैंड ऑन मार्स वॉट वी कैन डू इज दैट वी कैन डू फ्यूल कंजम्पन ओके एंड instead of using let's say x liters of fuel we are going to use x minus 50 liters of fuel okay and we'll make sure that we reach on the mars now this is the hypothesis that they created okay and they obviously they also proved that hypothesis with the help of um, with with the mangalyan landing but yeah for example you might have a hypothesis that eating healthy breakfast makes people more alert Yes. Now let's say you are going to research on a on a topic which says eating healthy breakfasts make people more alert, or rather, um, you know, um, consuming, uh, let's say, uh, consuming hundred uh, grams of protein a day will help you burn your fat faster. For example, I'm making a, a vague statement. Okay, I have made a statement that consuming hundred grams of protein a day will help you burn your fat faster. Okay, this is a statement that I have made. But guys, I have to also prove that statement. It's not just that you have made a statement and now the research paper will be published and now the companies or other people will start following the rights. And that is the reason I always say, uh, especially in terms of fitness, you must be watching a lot of YouTubers and stuff. Make sure if it's research backed. Make sure if it's research backed. Okay, don't just follow a YouTuber who is saying that hey, you know what, eat five uh, hundred grams of chicken a day and you will have that. No, 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 no. Firstly, check if that much chicken is really beneficial for you, is really good for your health, so on and so forth. If it's research backed, if the research suggests that having five hundred grams of chicken a day is good enough, especially if you are into bodybuilding or you are an athlete, so on and so forth. Yeah. Sample data. Obviously, in order to prove my hypothesis, I'll be needing sample data, right? If I don't have the data, what will I prove? Yes. So instead of studying everyone in the world, which basically means studying the entire population, we often study a smaller group, which is called as a sample. So instead of studying the entire population, I'll take a small sample, right? Instead of uh, studying, let's say, all the drugs or all the uh tablets that are there for joint pain available in the market i'll take a sample i'll take only 10 companies or other 10 companies ke 10 tablets which are used to heal uh joint pain in the market okay so if you want to test your breakfast hypothesis you might ask 100 people about their breakfast habits and alertness so you can take and and we had learned sampling techniques right so you can for example if i am uh, let's say uh, let's say you are in lpu campus okay and lpu campus is very big so what you will do is that you will take a chunk of lpu campus 
and you will ask the students let's say who are coming out of the mesh or in the in the college so on and so forth and you will ask you will ask uh, boys and girls in different uh, age groups you will ask professors you will ask the staff you will ask different people that hey you know what you have the breakfast do you really feel uh, alert okay do you really feel good okay uh, or do you feel bloated do you do you feel sleepy or what is what what is it or do, don't you or you find absolutely no change at all yeah I assess plausibility okay it says hypothesis testing is used to assess the plausibility okay what is assessing the plausibility Plausi plausibility means whether something seems believable or not is consuming 500 grams of chicken believable or not okay some might say yes some might say no okay it is it is uh, totally personal yes but is that believable um, having um, I don't know having some let's say three scoops of protein a day yeah is it plausible is it true is it good enough so on and so forth in our example you want to figure out if your hypothesis testing what is your sorry if your hypothesis what is the hypothesis eating healthy breakfast makes people more alert this is the statement on which you're doing the research yes is likely to be true is likely to be true okay matlab main jo bhi kar raha hun, wo sach hai okay or the hypothesis that i've come up with is real so hypothesis testing again is a method to decide if the hypothesis is believable or not in a nutshell what is hypothesis testing it is to decide if your hypothesis is believable or not it is to make an experiment to see if your idea really makes sense if my idea makes sense like for example if i come up with a hypothesis that having 100 grams of protein a day will help you burn your fat faster okay but does that hypothesis really makes sense or let's say i let's say i don't come up with now all the youtubers are saying that hey you know what you consume 100 grams of protein a day to burn the fat faster i am coming up with a theory that hey you know what you don't really need 100 grams you only need 25 grams of protein to burn your fat faster i have come up with an alternate theory now i need to prove that alternate theory how will i prove that alternate theory i'll check the plausibility of the hypothesis plausibility kaise check karunga? i'll go to the sample i'll take a i'll extract a sample let's say gym um, uh, people who are going through the fitness journey okay i'll take people who are obese i'll take people who have who have been gym for three six months i've been I'll, I'll, I'll ask the people who have been gymming for several years so on and so forth yes so yes when you put all the data together what happens is basically so hypothesis testing is used to assess the plausibility of hypothesis by making the by using the sample data which means you can use a method to check if an educated guess or idea seems likely to be true by looking at a smaller group if i look a small if i take a smaller group okay let's say i take a smaller group of let's say 30 people and i ask those 30 people to consume 25 grams of protein a day okay 25 grams of protein a day and please note these uh, 30 people are gym going people okay they, they they go to the gym okay they work out so on and so forth if consuming 25 grams of protein a day let's say for a period of 180 days that is six months because i want a big window for my hypothesis i want to you know if in order to see the effect you really need those 180 days if i if i'm if i take a sample of those 30 people and i ask those 30 people to consume 25 grams of protein a day for 180 days is my theory likely to be true can i see that fat fat loss okay uh, can i see the significant change or they are not making any significant fat loss when they were having or consuming 100 grams of protein a day okay so the information from a smaller group of people instead of studying the people worldwide okay so how does the hypothesis testing work okay an analyst performs a hypothesis testing on a statistical example or a statistical sample to present the evidence of the plausibility of the null hypothesis okay analysts use random population sample to test two hypotheses two hypotheses check kiye jate hain okay in hypothesis testing you always test end up testing two kinds of hypotheses one is the null hypothesis and second is the alternate hypothesis please note hypothesis is of two types there is a null hypothesis and there is an alternate hypothesis always remember null hypothesis is nothing but the ground truth which the industry believes in currently okay so the industry currently believes in the fitness guys currently believe in 
that consuming 100 grams of protein a day 100 grams of protein a day will help me burn my fat faster that is the ground truth that is the null that is the null hypothesis but i as a fitness researcher i am coming up with an alternate hypothesis that hey you know what you don't really need 100 grams of protein a day all you need is 25 grams of protein a day to burn the fat faster what am i doing i am coming up with an alternate hypothesis i am coming up with an alternate theory i am challenging a theory which is which is existing in that particular industry for years and years okay that's the difference between null and alternate hypothesis okay so null hypothesis is typically an equality hypothesis between population parameters for example null hypothesis may claim that the population means return equals to zero okay these are just technical definitions you don't have to really uh, mug them up but have an understanding okay but alternate hypothesis is essentially the inverse of null hypothesis okay what is alternate hypothesis it is inverse of null hypothesis okay example population mean the return is not equal to zero in this case the population mean equals to zero in this case population mean does not equals to zero this is a null hypothesis this is an alternate hypothesis okay as a result they are mutually exclusive one only one may be correct what is mutually exclusive there are two three things only one is correct okay one of the two possibilities will always be correct okay so out of this one thing will be correct right this the the research that i came up with either this research is correct or this research is good enough or this research is good enough okay let's take a candy example okay when we are doing hypothesis testing okay for example um okay just give me a moment please uh, okay fair. now imagine you have a favorite candy okay let's call it candy x okay and you think it's the best for example uh ferrero rocher i love ferrero rocher okay and i think ferrero rocher is the best is the best um, chocolate uh in the world okay again okay, this is subjective some might think it is not it is overrated so on and so forth okay similarly let's say candy x is best and now you have a friend who has a different favorite candy let's say candy y okay and for him or her candy y is great okay and they think it's the best okay so there is friend a there is friend b friend a loves candy x friend b loves candy y okay so you both decide to settle this with a taste test okay obviously for doing the taste test you are not going to taste it right i mean main khud ferrer rocher kha ke nahi bolunga ferrer rocher is the best i need different kind of people i need sample of people who will test uh, sorry who will taste <laughs> candy uh candy x and candy y and will tell me which of them is better okay but you can try every single candy x and y in the world right because there are too many yeah so what you will do is that you will pick a small group of candies i'll, I'll uh, instead of people let's say now i pick more candies okay from the store and these small groups are like your sample data okay let's say i don't just go for ferrer rocher and i just go for toblerone i go for more candies i go for marsh a uh, mars i go for hershey's i go for pepper i no, no peppermint is not a candy sorry i go for more of them okay whatever you can think of yeah i go for twix i go for multiple such candies okay or chocolates now we, we what we do is that we come up with a now we need to do hypothesis testing correct we need to see if candy x is better or tastes better can or candy y tastes better yes now what do i need to do i need to do the hypothesis testing okay you both have a belief right a and b both have some belief correct this belief in technical terms is called as hypothesis okay itna yaad rakho this belief is called as hypothesis what is the belief candidate a thinks x is amazing candidate b thinks y is amazing right yours is that candy x is the best and y is the best for candidate b now let's let's see how are we trying to do the taste test okay how do we intend to do the taste test you and your friend ask a few people to taste the candies you have chosen let's say you have for example you have, you have your sample data and let's say you have a couple of friends okay make sure those friends are unbiased okay or let's say you take some random people let's say i take 50 random people and i'm going to ask them to taste both the candies 
Okay, so you ask them the, to rate the candies from one, which is worst, to ten, which is best. So I'm going to, for example, I'm going to give them two candies. I'm going to give them Ferro Rocher. Uh, sorry, I'm going to give them a couple of candies, and I'm going to ask them to rate it. So obviously, when there is rating, there is always comparison. Correct? Jaha pe rating or reviews hai, wahan pe comparison bhi aaya. Correct? So after collecting the ratings, you compare the average or the mean ratings of candy X and candy Y. Okay. So I'll take candy X and I'll take candy Y and I'll take the mu of X and mu of Y, which is basically the average score of X and the average score of candy Y. Okay. And you want to see which candy got the higher scores on average. Okay. So because let's say I have taken a sample of 50 people, 50 people are going to taste different candies. I'm going to take the average out of 50 and I'm going to check what was the average score candy X got, what was the average score that candy Y got. Okay. So what is the conclusion? If candy X has a significantly higher average rating than candy Y in your taste test, obviously you might start to think that your hypothesis that candy X is the best is more likely to be true. Correct? Are you trying to understand? I had already let's say it's me and my friend i had already made a statement or uh had a belief had a hypothesis that candy x is the best now it is more likely to be true why is it more likely to, to be true because it is supported by the evidence what is the evidence the evidence is the scores and the reviews given by the population right now it is not just me giving a biased opinion that hey you know what it is great but now i have 50 more people backing me i have 50 more people backing me who are saying that hey you know what candy x is better as compared to candy y okay but if the scores are very similar let's say if, if you get a rating like 9 and 9.1 out of 10 if the scores are very much similar, you might not have enough evidence to say for sure which candy is better. Okay, at that point of time, kya karenge? Okay, for example, someone says, hey, you know what, Chirantan, I made a hypothesis testing, okay, and candy X got 9 and candy Y got 9.1. So, Chirantan, what would you prefer? What should I do? Have, have a bigger sample now. See, if you asked 50 people, right, you asked 50 people for their average. Now, go and ask, let's say, 150 people. Go and ask 150 people and try to get the average scores. Now I'm sure the average will differ. Now you might again say, Chirantan, you know what? We tried, but now it's getting 9.2 and now I'm getting like 9.35. What do I do? Add in more people. If possible, add in more candies, so on and so forth. Yes, that is how you come up with a good research. Okay. So in a nutshell, what are we trying to do? Okay, in a nutshell, hypothesis testing is to check if your belief or if your hypothesis is supported by the evidence from the small group of data, see again, as I said, just making a hypothesis won't suffice. I have to support that by the evidence. I have to support that from a small group of data. Correct. Uh, it's not just me because when I only give an opinion, that's a biased opinion. But when my opinion is supported by the evidence, Okay, is supported by more number of people. That that is what formulates a good hypothesis, right? That is what formulates a research-backed opinion, correct? Because it is not always possible to test test everything for everyone, right? Obviously, I mean, will you really go and um, do it for hundred hundred million people? No, it is very it is not cost effective, right? So it helps you make the decision based on the information you have. Okay. Now let's understand in detail what is null hypothesis. See, guys, I told you there are two types of hypotheses. There is null hypothesis and there is alternate hypothesis. Null hypothesis is given by H naught. This is H naught or H of zero. You can you can call it H naught. You can call it H of zero. Both are same. So the null hypothesis is the default or the boring assumption in the scientific experiment of the study. The default assumption. What is the default assumption? E equals to mc square. We all know that, right? This is the default assumption. This is nothing but your null hypothesis. But someone comes in, uh, someone, some, some random guy comes in, okay, and he or she says that, hey, you know what? E is not equal to mc square. E is actually e raised to the, e is equal to mc to the power of 7. That 
is your alternate hypothesis. We'll see alternate hypothesis also. So again, this is nothing but your default or your boring scientific assumption. Okay, it's it is the statement that suggests that there is no real effect or no significant difference between the groups or conditions. Okay, in other words, it is the idea that represents in nothing interesting or usual is happening. Usual. We all have been hearing for years, right? E equals to mc square, right? Or for example, we all have been hearing for for years that carrot is really carrot is full of vitamin A and it is really good for your eyes. We all have been hearing for years that, uh, uh, for example, uh, what do I say? Uh, you, you can you can take up any such beliefs that you have around you. Okay, for example, standing in sun for 10 minutes every single day will increase vitamin D in your body and you won't really uh, face any skin or melanin related issues. That is the null hypothesis that we have been following for years. The default assumptions that we are surrounded with. Okay. Let me take one more example with all with the null hypothesis. Okay. Imagine you have a favorite soda. Okay. There's any, for example, let's take Kinley and let's take Dukes. I'm just giving you a random example. Okay. Let's call it soda A and a new soda, soda B. Okay. Soda B has just been introduced, claiming to be far more better. See, Dukes made such a massive advertisement. They they are like, hey, you know what? We are really good as compared to Kinley. We are a new entrant into the market, but we are really good. And this is also, guys, if you can remember, this is also what Balaji Wafers did. Balaji Wafers came up with uh the, now, now, if you know, Balaji Vapor has a really good distribution across India. Okay. And so did Lays because Lays had all the money in the world to pump in to create that kind of distribution. Okay. But Balaji Vapors came in and Balaji Vapors like, hey, you know what? We don't just give you air, we also give you chips. Okay. So, and the quantity of, and that is, I think, where uh, Balaji Vapors really won as compared to Lays. Yes, obviously we have our uh, have our favorite flavors, right? Uh, when it comes to Lay's, uh, some people like Lay's orange. Uh, I don't know what it's Caribbean. Some people like it blue. Yeah, um, magic masala. Some people like plain salted. Okay, I don't really uh, make friends with those guys who like plain salted. But yeah, fair. and then came Balaji, and Balaji came up with every uh, cream and onion again, great flavor. Uh, and then Balaji came up with all the flavors. Yeah, they came up with chaat masala. They came up with I don't know so many of them yes so again coming back to the example there came a soda entrant who said that hey you know what we are really good as compared to soda b now what do we do you decide to do a taste test to if the soda b is better than soda a again guys we are going to the same thing just how we did with candies now we are doing with soda okay jo hum log ne candy ke saath kiya tha abhi hum wo soda ke saath kar rahe hain theek hai abhi tak janta kya bol rahi janta bol rahi yaar kinle badi hai okay but now I'm going to convince, or rather now I'm going to tell Janta, I'm going to take Janta of, let's, or pop, pop, sample of around, let's say, 500 people, and I'm going to make them taste dukes. Okay? Now, in the world of null hypotheses, null part means nothing. Obviously, you know, null means nothing, right? Nothing interesting. Kuch badiya nahi hai yaar pe. So, your null hypothesis in this soda taste would be something like, what is the null hypothesis that you're coming up with? Soda A and soda B taste the same. This is the null hypothesis. Okay. What is the null hypothesis? So, yeah, there is no significant difference. See, what is null hypothesis? It is the boring. There is no real effect or no significant difference. Null hypothesis suggests there is no significant difference between two groups. In this case, what are the two groups? Soda A and soda B. So null hypothesis, null hypothesis says, See, there is no significantly taste difference between soda A and soda B. Yeah, they both, both dono same like hai. Okay, that is what you are coming up with. Yes. For example, uh, we all, we you know, you might have your own favorite beer. Okay. For me, Carlsberg and Henneken somewhat taste the same. Carlsberg and Henneken somewhat like the same. Though I am a Budweiser fan. For me, Carlsberg and, uh, sorry, Carlsberg and Henneken, they somewhat mean the same. Okay. But when it tastes Budweiser Magnum, it is it is different from that of Henneken. Yes. So again, 
So in simpler terms, what are we trying to do? Okay, in simpler terms, you are starting with the idea that there is no real difference in the taste between soda A and soda B. You are assuming they taste equally good or equally bad. You are like, hey, you know what? Carlsberg and Henneken both are equally good. Or Carlsberg and Henneken both are equally bad. I can't really... I can't really make uh, I can't really make a difference that if Carlsberg is better than Henneken or if Dukes is better than Soda or uh, uh, Kinley, right? Or let's say if uh, um, I don't know, yeah, some some two things are the same basically, yeah. So when you do your taste test and gather the data from people who try both sodas, you're trying to see if there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. If I want to reject the null hypothesis, what is the null hypothesis? If I want to reject this, that hey, you know what, soda and soda B don't taste the same, they actually taste different. And soda B is better than soda A. Which means I want to reject the null hypothesis. So if I want to reject the null hypothesis, I have to have to have a very, very strong evidence. Okay? I can't leave in the air in Right? So if your data strongly suggests that soda B tastes better than soda A, you might reject the null hypothesis and say there is something interesting going on here and soda B does really taste better. And when I say that, hey, you know what, soda B tastes better than soda A, that is when we are formulating an alternate hypothesis. Because null hypothesis kya bolta hai? Null hypothesis bolta hai, yaar, soda A and soda B to same hi hai. But alternate hypothesis bolta hai, hey, you know what, soda B is much better than soda a. In dono ke taste mein difference hai. Kin le ghatiya lagta hai when it comes to dukes. Okay. That is null hypothesis. Okay. Now in simpler terms again, but if your data does not provide a strong evidence to say that soda B is better, you might fail to reject the null hypothesis. What is failing to reject the null hypothesis? This means that we are accepting the null hypothesis. 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 We are accepting the null the null hypothesis. We are the null the same. So what am I doing? I am I don't say that I am accepting the null hypothesis. In statistics, we say we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Jiska matlab hota hai, we, accepting, we are accepting the null hypothesis. Well, we couldn't find enough proof to say soda B is better than soda A. They might taste the same. Okay, so in summary, so in summary, mein kya karenge? Hum log bolenge, null hypothesis is a starting point in the experiments. Yes, guys, null hypothesis is the starting point in experiment, right? My experiment is cheese pe mein. What is the foundation block on which I'm starting the experiment? The foundation block suggests soda A and soda B taste the same. That's my foundation hypothesis. Yes. So is that it's the idea that there is no real difference or effect that the researchers gather data so to see or rather to have an evidence. OK, it's a way of being skeptical and making sure that you have good reasons to believe something good is happening before you accept it. OK, this is what null hypothesis is. OK. Now let's see what is alternate hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis, a null hypothesis is like the boring or the default assumption. Okay. Yes. But alternate hypothesis is the exactly opposite of that. Okay. Alternate hypothesis is exactly opposite of null hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis is given by H A or it is also given by H1. Both of mean both mean correct. You can use anything. Okay, it is the exact opposite idea of null hypothesis. What was the null hypothesis, guys? If you can recall, Carlsberg and Henneken taste the same. What can be the alternate hypothesis that hey, Carlsberg and Henneken don't taste the same? Henneken tastes better than Carlsberg, or Carlsberg tastes better than Henneken. Yes, so if a statement that suggests that there is no real effect or significant difference between the groups or conditions in a scientific experiment or a study. Okay. In other words, it is the idea that something interesting or unusual is happening. Kuch to badia ho raha yaar yaan pe. Yes, something really good is happening here. Something really good is cooking here. Okay. Aaj, aaj tak log bol rahe the ki yaar, you know what? Hey, yaar, Carlsberg and Henneken, they mean the same. 
but there came a new research or other there uh, now i have a more evidence which or or a group of people who are saying hey you know what actually honey can taste better or iphone versus one plus there are groups who say iphone is better than one plus there are some people who say one plus is better than iphone so on and so forth yes let's take an example can you remember the soda taste that we talked about earlier yes so in this this example we had a null hypothesis saying that soda a and soda b taste the same okay now we have an alternate hypothesis what is the alternate hypothesis that i have alternate hypothesis is soda b tastes better than soda a let's say this is soda b okay and this is soda a i am saying that soda b changa c this is Changa C and this is not Changa C. Okay. Now, in simpler terms, again, what are we suggesting in simpler terms? Okay. You will know alternate hypothesis saying that there is a real difference in the taste. Alternate hypothesis, right? That hey, you know what? There is actually a real taste between soda A and soda B, and actually, soda B is far more better. Okay. Your soda B, soda me soda B has a bit of a minty taste. And I really like that minty taste. Okay, it really makes me refreshed. Uh, if I have acidity, if I take soda B, I really feel relieved. Okay. Uh, so when you taste taste and collect the data from people who try both the sodas, you are trying to see if there is enough evidence to support this alternate hypothesis. Okay, again, as I said. Hypothesis hawa mein built nahi karna hai, usko support karna hai evidence ke saath. Theek hai? If your data strongly suggests that soda B does, does indeed taste better than soda A, you might accept the alternate hypothesis. Okay, for example, if I say that soda B is better tasting than soda A, what am I going to do? I say I accept the alternate hypothesis. Guys, if you can recall, what are the two statements? Those statements kya bolte? Ek statement bolte hai that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. We don't say that we accept the null hypothesis. Okay. See, if I want to go ahead with null hypothesis, I am going to say that I fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we are going ahead with alternate hypothesis, we say that we accept the alternate hypothesis hypothesis what is null hypothesis again soda a tastes same as soda b what is alternate hypothesis soda b tastes much more better than soda a okay again but if your soda does not provide strong evidence which are khas evidence nahi hai uske hamare paas okay jo bhi evidence tha na bahut hi biased tha what is biased opinion? Biased opinion is basically skewed data. Kuch bhi karo, wo log bolenge, nahi yaar, Karls Buggy better. Nahi yaar, Karls Buggy better. Why? Because I have a liking. For example, kuch bhi ho jai, Old Monk is the best from in the world. Yes, and I do truly support that. Okay. Uh, but if even if there is some really good rum in some corner of the world, you are not going to or you are not ready to accept that hey you know what even if there is a good rum in the world i really don't want to taste it because i have an emotional connect i have an emotional connect when it comes to old monk okay that's a biased opinion let's say that there is some strong evidence which is available out there hey you know what old monk is not really that great it has 42 percent volume to volume alcohol uh but you know what we have a really good rum which is here, which is which don't, doesn't really have that kind of alcohol. Let's say it only has 24% volume to volume alcohol and it tastes really good. But you, you, you are like, hey, you know what? We don't want this. We Indians love old monk. Okay. That's a biased opinion, right? To support the so, that soda B is better, you might fail to accept the alternate hypothesis and say that, well, we couldn't find enough proof that soda B is different from soda A in terms they might taste the same. So in summary, what are we trying to do? It says that an alternate hypothesis is like the exciting idea in the experiments. I have come up with some amazing alternate hypothesis. Okay. And the scientific community or they are like going gaga over it. They are like amazing. Kya kiya amazing. Okay. 
it's the statement that there is a real difference or the effect that researchers gather data to see if there is enough evidence to support this idea. It is the opposite of being skeptical, okay, and aims that something interesting is happening. What is the null hypothesis? Null hypothesis bol raha hai, nothing interesting is happening. Jo sadiyo se chalte aara, whatever is happening from centuries, it is the same. E equals to mc square since 1929, it is still, still E equals to mc square. But now something interesting is happening. There is some group of scientists who are coming up with some exciting theory who say that Einstein, what Einstein said was wrong. E is not equals to mc square. E is actually equals to mc to the power of 7. Yes, that's an alternate hypothesis. So what are the benefits of hypothesis testing? Why do I use hypothesis testing? Why do I use it? Why? What is the benefit? Okay. It says that hypothesis testing helps assess the accuracy of new ideas. See guys, whenever I am coming up with a new idea, okay, a new theory, I have to assess the accuracy, right? I don't want to kill the air in the air, right? And now, especially guys, if, if any one of you is doing a startup, okay, or if you want to do a startup, you always build an MVP. MVP is a minimum viable product and you roll out that to some of your initial customers. Why do you do that? You want to taste the waters. You want to see if the मतलब वो सच में उस प्रोडक्ट का प्रोडक्ट मार्केट फिट है सच में उस प्रोडक्ट का नीड है हाउ आर माय कस्टमर्स परसीविंग दैट प्रोडक्ट व्हाट आर द व्यूज इस देर सम और व्हाट इस द एक्यूरेसी फॉर एग्जांपल यू 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 रिलीज एन एप हाउ हाउ गुड इस दैट एप Okay, that is nothing but इन अ वे यू आर ट्राइंग ट� Coming back to hypothesis testing, it helps to assess the accuracy of new ideas. This allows researchers to determine whether the evidence supports their hypotheses, helping to avoid false claim and conclusions. So hypothesis testing also provides a framework for your decision making based on the data rather than personal opinion and biases. Guys, super, super important. See, we have to make research backed opinions. Okay, it has not to be personal opinions. Neither they have to be biases. Okay. Hypothesis testing is like providing a framework for decision based for decision making based on data. Data we had kaise gather kiya tha? We had actually taken a sample, right? We had actually chosen a sample, right? Uh, who supported our data, right? It is not some personal opinions. I am not taking uh no, I'm not taking a group of friends and I'm I'm going to bribe them. Hey, you know what? यार ये ले और ना और रिसर्च में जाके बता दे डेट कैंडी एक्स इज़ बेटर दें कैंडी वाई आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट आई एम इट्स देर नो प्लेस फॉर बायसेस देर नो प्लेस फॉर पर्सनल ओपिनियंस देर ऑल डेटा बैक्ड देर ऑल अनबायस्ड ओपिनियंस यस जस्ट अलाउ मी अ मिनट लेट मी पुट माय लैपटॉप ऑन चार्ज Okay, all right. Thanks for waiting. All right. So by okay, yeah. So by relying on statistical analysis, hypothesis testing helps to reduce the effects of chance and confounding variables. What are confounding variables? Okay, confounding variables is basically the variables that support the hypothesis. Okay, providing a robust framework. Okay, and informed conclusions. Okay, um, confounding variables. मतलब यार बताओ तुम लोगों को for example, let's say, how do they support my data? I'll tell you. For example, let's say I am doing a research on, uh, uh, let's say, sales of, uh, let's say, sales of some laptops. Okay, let's say HP laptops. When I'm gathering the data with respect to sales of HP laptops um, in the in financial year, or let's say in the year of 2023, do I really need data on weather? weather Climate. मेरे को चाहिए क्या? नहीं चाहिए, right? I don't really. I mean, what is? What? There is no relation between the sales of HP laptops and the climate. But even if I have climate data, that climate data is called as a confounding variable. It does not really 
adding any value to my data okay that's a confounding variable right but everything comes with limitation okay everything in the world comes with some part of limitation what are some limitations of hypothesis testing okay hypothesis testing relies exclusively on data and does not provide a comprehensive understanding of the subject being studied in depth understanding dene mein kahin na kahin to wo fail karta hai hypothesis testing okay in depth obviously i mean if you are uh, now there are also multiple techniques with which you can overcome this okay but it's not like hypothesis testing is not used okay it's very important okay additionally the accuracy of results depends on the quality of data okay available yes and methods used so please note the quality of data has to be really really good badi badiya quality ka data hona chahiye tab ja ke aapko ek acha hypothesis build kar paoge aur acha hypothesis ko aap prove kar paoge theek hai inaccurate data or inappropriate hypothesis formulation may lead to incorrect conclusion or failed tests hypothesis testing can also lead to errors such as analysts either accepting or rejecting a null hypothesis when they shouldn't have matlab even though you don't have to reject the alternate hypothesis you end up rejecting the alternate hypothesis you don't have to do that right so that is wrong so these errors may result in false conclusion or missed opportunities do you want false conclusions obviously not if 100 grams of protein a day is not good for your body you that's a failed conclusion you don't want that conclusion to be put into practice what will the ill effect you might have ill effects right what ill effects hongi uske people might uh, have kidney issues liver issues intestinal issues heart issues so on and so, nervous and system issues so on and so forth yes digestive issues kitna kuch ho sakta hai or missed opportunities to find significant find or identify significant patterns or relationships in the data so there are definitely some limitations to hypothesis testing so it really depends on a very skilled data analyst or a data scientist as to how he or she builds the hypothesis okay okay all right so that was all about hypothesis testing guys any doubts any doubts any doubts any doubts you want to ask you want to you want to clarify now uh, you did not understand you want me to re explain it to you guys anything Okay, I need to share the PPT. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, you were inaudible. What word? Oh, can you please share the PPT? Okay, okay. Uh, can I share it here? Just a moment. Let me check. No, I can't share it here. So what I'll do is that I'll I'll email it to Aditya, and he will broadcast it to you guys. Okay, if you don't have any doubts, so that was guys about that was all about hypothesis testing. Super super important uh, in this entire syllabus. Okay, you won't be having any numerical. Um, how do I say this? Like numerical numericals with respect to hypothesis testing, but just the theory part. Okay, okay, all right. I hope you did not have don't have any doubts. If you have any doubts, please feel free to email me. Okay, uh, let's catch up. I think we have a session tomorrow as well. Let's catch up tomorrow, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye.
guys, any doubts? Sorry, I, uh, yeah. Okay, then. I think that was...